Hey, welcome to Structure Fishing. I'm Jim Shell. Got a trip plan that I'm really, really excited about. As everyone knows, because of the scare demic, I mean the pandemic, uh, the Canadian border is closed, so we are not able to go to our favorite lake, Red Lake, Ontario, up at Black Bear Lodge. We've been going for the last five years. This would have been the sixth year in a row, and it actually would have been my 11th time going up. Um, but uh, can't couldn't go up there, so we were to, trying to think of what else we can do. And uh, it was just a few days ago. Uh, I'm first off, I'm filming this about seven, eight days before I'm leaving for the trip, and I'm I'm doing a scheduled release, so it comes out Monday, my first day I'm up there fishing. Uh, so I'm going to do a part two follow up, but uh, let me talk about how this trip came about and. What this video is going to be about is how to do your pre-fishing, get your game plan, get as much research done, identify the structures, and I'm going to show you how I do it. Uh, hopefully, this is going to help you. Uh, you know, keep in mind for future trips, and uh, you know, hopefully, it help you guys. Uh, maybe a lot of you are doing the same thing, uh, maybe not, but I'm just going to show you how I go about doing it. And all right, so as you know, Canada is closed, so. We were thinking about fishing the upper Michigan, this area over here, but, you know, Casey really wanted to, you know, have that Canadian feel of a trip as well as I did. I wanted it too. And Casey's also been bugging me for the last few years about taking, uh, you know, roughing it, going out there, spending a night, you know, on an island, camping, that kind of thing. So I started thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? Rainy Lake, part of it's the United States. You know, I started looking at it. I wasn't familiar with Rainy Lake at all. Um, not one bit other than we would drive by it on our way up north. And the only thing I know about Rainy Lake is years ago, watching TV shows, uh, I think Midwest Outdoors many, many years ago, uh, they were a big advertiser, Rainy Lake houseboats. Really the only thing I knew about the lake. Um, but then I started looking into it, and they've got this, I think it's called Voyagers National Park. And um, they have... Uh, quite a few i want to say maybe 60 scattered campsites mostly on islands throughout this uh rainy lake area here and apparently you got to make reservations you just can't go out there on your own i don't believe and just camp on a on an island you have to uh register and they call getting a permit and all that other stuff so i looked into it maybe less than two weeks before we were going up there and there were only a handful of sites available for the three days I wanted to go. And one of the, uh, I think there were only two spots available, islands available on this whole thing here for those three days, which would be the August 10th, 11th, and 12th. And one of them happened to be on an island right in the area I wanted, I was looking at the map, wanted the fish, which is right here. So made the reservation. I thought this is going to be a great trip. We're going to camp on an island. We're going to be 15 miles away from the from the closest boat ramp. It's going to be a great trip. So uh, let me just give you a quick rundown on what I know about Rainy Lake first before I get into the mapping area. Uh, Rainy Lake, I believe, from what I researched, is about 250,000 acres. So it's a pretty good-sized lake. As you can see here, 70% of it is in Ontario. 30% of it, roughly, is in the United States. And the far west end of Rainy Lake is International Falls, Fort Francis, where we cross the border when we go to Red Lake. Right is over here. And roughly about 35 miles in, uh, of the lake. And let me just show you here. Uh, you know, I, this is going to be sort of a tutorial on using the Navionics uh, 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 website as well, too. When I did my last video, I was, uh, I was doing some color shading of the, of the lakes here and uh i had quite a few comments that uh, people didn't know that was available so uh I'll, i guess i'll make this a little bit of a uh, web navionics tutorial as well too but you click on the lower right hand corner you got a little compass here that's actually just a, a measuring tool here so you click on that and you can move these two little points around and measure distances here so the far west end of the lake to where well i'm just to to the end of the lake here is just over 35 miles long. It has a crow flies here, so you got a lot of water in the United States here to cover. So, and oh, this, this lake is so big, but it's only accessible from the west end at International Falls till the road ends right here, and that's it. There are no roads here at all. 
in this part of the lake. So we are going to be launching the boat at the very end here, I believe right over here. And then taking a 15 mile boat ride through here, all the way over here and the island I have, I'll be camping on is right over here, a little Finlander Island. We'll be there uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and hopefully fishing half a day Thursday before we leave and finish out the week fishing in Green Bay. So let's go into, so now uh, here's where my home base is right over here. So I'm going to limit myself to this area right here. So now I'm going to zoom in and take a look at the structures. Now, first off, I'm a, well, a couple, well, let me go more, a couple of things here about Navionics. Uh, Navionics, you can see this is H, high definition HD map. And what that means is you got one foot contours here, but don't be fooled by some of Navionics maps. When they actually did map the lake high definition, they are fairly accurate. Now, don't get me wrong. They're not 100% accurate. There's a lot of features, a lot of things that they're going to miss. But the main structures are going to be fairly accurate. And uh, they're going to pick up, you know, you can see here, there's a lot of humps that, that are picked up here. But they only map the United States side of this lake here. You can see on the Canadian side, you do have one foot contours, but it's not truly mapped. They interpolate the regular definition data and interpolate that into high definition so even though they're calling it an hd or you know it's not really it's not mapped at all they just took the standard five foot or, or 10 or 20 foot contours and just interpolated that data guessing where the contours would fall in so when you see something like this where the brake lines appear to be pretty all even you know, you, you can just tell by looking at that, that it's 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 not truly mapped. Um, I wish Navionics wouldn't do that because it's very misleading. Uh, you know, the average guy, a fisherman might look at this and think that it's truly mapped. But I can tell, and maybe hopefully a lot of you guys, by just how the, the contour lines are pretty all, they're not irregular at all. And you can just tell by looking at it that it's, you know, you just look at the comparison here between the U.S. side and Canadian side. So they just interpolate that data and it's wrong. Like I said, I wish Navionics wouldn't do that. Uh, let me show you another thing here to, to figure how to figure that out. You see this little button here. You click on that and it's going to say Navionics and Sonar Charts. Right now we're looking at Sonar Charts, which is the high definition. Now I click on Navionics here. And you can see that the U.S. side was was been mapped, but the Canadian side is not. So they just took this data here, standard definition map, which is it looks like it's only, oh, I want to say they've got like a six foot contour, nine, and then the 30 feet. I mean, it, it's, and they just interpolated that information to make it guessing where the high definition is. So, um you can always you click this button down here. I'd rather look at this regular version here and make my own calculations as to what I think it looks like instead of having sonar charts, na uh, navionics. I mean, just uh, interpolate that and and give me a, a, a you know a false readout on that. But on the U.S. side, it is was looks like it was thoroughly mapped by navionics. So. All right, now get that out of the way. Oh, okay, one other thing I want to go over, which I did last time, is click on this menu, and you'll see this. I'm not going to, the only thing I'm really interests us here is go to Map Options, and you can see what they call the safety depth. That means that you can set this thing from 0 to 60 feet, and I'm just going to set it to 7 feet just to show you. So what that means is everything down to a depth of 7 feet, it's going to show up as blue. You can see here there there isn't a lot of shallow water here you can see that anything that shows up in blue is seven feet or less now let me take that and change that to uh you know i like fishing you know deep structures buck even says in his book real quick here uh, uh, that he wrote like probably 40 50 years ago you know there is it's hard to say what a good ideal drop off deep break line is 
But I believe Buck even said in one of his writings, you know, anywhere from 17 to 22 feet. Um, and now that our lakes are so much clearer, um, I think that's much steeper. I think uh, Don Dixon in some of his teachings had said that that's, you know, probably, you know, 22 to the, the 30 feet, maybe even deeper. Uh, it, it is a good depth you want for, uh, uh, so let me change this here. So I'm going to change, I, I, I like say 26 feet. So I've got it set to where now you can see there's a lot more blue here now. So everything up to 26 feet is shaded blue. This is, helps you identify some of the structures and, and where to spend some of your, uh, how, how to do your pre-interpretation here. So to get rid of this here, just come over here and hit close. And then you got more space here. Now I'm old school. I like actually printing out a copy of this and having it in the boat with me in my I've got a, a little uh, uh, Ray Marine unit uh, that I use to run my charts on. And that's, I'm only looking at this much of the screen at a time. So I like having paper in my hand. I, I, like I said, I'm just old school when it comes to that. So I like printing these maps out. I'm going to show you what's called the snipping tool. Uh, every Windows has it. Just go over here and I'm just going to show you. I've got a shortcut for it, but I'm going to show you how to find it. Just go over here and type in S N. And there it pops up right there. It's called the snipping tool. Just click on that. You get a little dialog box showing up over here. And I'm just going to move it off to the side. You can't see it. Well, uh, I'll make it here. You can see it. So I just click on new. And I'm just going to, with my mouse, click where I want to start it. Keep my mouse down and drag it to where, what I want to copy or save a picture of. Right there. And boom, it's going to pop up. And I've got some of these options here where I've got a pen tool where I can, you know, draw and mark. And I've got a highlight highlighter too, like like I want to remember this structure here or this area here. I can highlight it there. Then I can hit the save button and call it whatever I want to. It's going to save it as a JPEG. But that's what I like doing for all my uh, maps. I'll show you that in a second here. I've got some, I got them already saved, but I'm just going to, show you those a little bit later all right so i am camping here so i am limiting myself like i said to the u.s side so i'm fishing this area here which is let me pull up my measuring measuring tool again uh so just click and drag that to here click and drag this into here so i'm i'm, I'm going to be fishing an area that's about the uh, uh, three and a half miles, oh, say from north to south to, uh, uh, say, five miles west to east. Uh, uh, doesn't look that big, but it, it looks like, but there's a lot of structures in that area here. So let's start taking a look at what we have there. All right, so my camp is over here. So now let's zoom in, get a little closer look at some of the areas we have here. Now I like finding these deeper break lines or deeper structures is what I'm really looking for here. Uh, right off the bat, we've got a hump over here. Tops off at uh, you know five, six feet right over here. Uh, it's got deep water all the way around it. I mean, it looks okay. Um, I, it, it's a structured situation. You got deep water all the way around it. Um, I like finding some deeper break lines, and it looks like you have a deeper area over here. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably go out there and, you know, fish this area or work this whole thing, but I would probably, I'm looking for like the contact points, and I'd have to zoom in and see. I'd have to actually count this over here 20. Well, this is blue to 26, so yeah, it's a deeper break line here. That could be worth checking out over there. Um, give me one second here. But, so yeah, you know what? I, I, I like that area. So, and look at over here. You got some shoreline, deep shoreline bars over here. It looks like you got a little finger at around 24 feet over here. A deeper one at 33 feet over here. Um... Like I said, the blue goes up to 26 feet. So this is, looks like it's you got about a, a shoreline bar. 
with a little hump at the end of it at 15 feet. Yeah, you got a lot of structure situation here. So I'm going to get my snipping tool out. This is one area I want to fish. And I'm going to go over here and snip this. And just so I don't forget the areas, I'm going to hit the highlighter here. And I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to highlight this. This is just so when I get on the water, I remember, oh, yeah, here's some good deep stuff I want to look at. Um, this is a little shallower here, but I think it's worth checking out. And also, oh, my uh, picture is blocking it here, but uh, let me see. Can I move this? Hang on. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I snipped myself over here. But this hump over here, I'm going to check out too. So I'm going to going to, and I already went through here. I'll show you later, but I'm going to call this map A. So I've got, and I'm going to save that and then print it out on a uh, 11 by 17. All right. So now I'm going to take a look. What else do I have here that looks good? Boy, there's so much structure in this area here. I like this area over here. I've got a shoreline bar coming out with a couple of humps at the end of it. But you can see, like I said, I'm looking for some, I like deeper break lines. Once again, as I mentioned earlier, you know, 20 feet is really good. 22 is better. 24 is better. You know, ideally, personally, from my experience fishing in Canada and Red Lake, I like finding these break lines from at least 22 feet down to, to 26 feet. It, 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 if, if I've got a, a drop-off that is, occurs at that depth, those are structures that I really want to concentrate on and look at. And it looks like I've got that situation here at around maybe uh, this. Is, well, this is this is down. The, yeah, it looks like this is about 25 feet. I got a good break line, deep bar, deep break line over here. And it goes up to the shells areas over here. And just off of that, I've got two deep pumps. Uh, one that crowns off in around 25 feet here, another one about 25 feet here, and I've got a lot of deep, you know, that's what the crown are, and it looks like you, I got a drop off here, like around 30, 35 feet. So, this is another area I want to check out. So, I'm going to hit my snipping tool, make myself a copy of this, and I'm going to use my little highlighter here to remember that I want to check out these deeper humps over here as well as this stuff over here the, this deeper break line over here as well as checking shallow now when I get on the water and start fishing these of course I'm going to start shallow we never want to go run right to the deep water because those fish maybe they're moving and they're up shallow but I'm going to start my presentation lure shallow and work my way deep but I'm going to probably you know if I don't catch anything shallow I'm going to spend most of my time working these deep break lines like here so now I've got another area here identified. I'm going to go back to my pen tool here and I'm just going to label that B. A little sloppy there. I've got these already done. I'm going to show you in a second here, but I'm going to keep on going. Uh, get rid of that. Okay. Uh, I'll show you what this looks like when, when I'm saved later. So let's continue off looking over here. Uh, here's another hump here tops off at 10 feet I don't really see any significant break lines here I mean it looks like the deepest water in the area here is only around 38 feet uh, versus the deepest water in these other structures we looked at like I got 54 feet 60 feet in this area so I got a lot of good deep water here here not so much this doesn't look nearly, you do have structure situations. Not every structure situation is going to produce fish. You got to, I'm looking for the structures that you've got these good deeper break lines with access to even deeper water. And I really don't see it over here in this area over here. So let me come up. You can see this is just all shallow here. I want to stick with the deeper stuff here. Um, on a second here so all right so let me look up over here now this area looks pretty interesting here 
I've got a hump over here. Looks like I've got what uh, about 29, 30 feet of water, a little flat, and I got a shoreline bar over here. But I, I've got a pretty deep pump over here. It tops off. Most of it tops off around uh, 10, 11, 12 feet. Um, you got a little channel, if you want to call it, on the side over here. Um, I've got another hump, a couple of humps over here. It looks like you got a little deeper crown, 15 feet over here, 17 feet. I mean, this looks, I check it out. I don't see that much good stuff, deeper stuff here. But once again, I've got to go on the water and make that final interpretation when I get on the water. When I get to this area, I might find out that Navionics isn't really showing a good deep break line here, but um, I sort of like this area here. I would save this area here, call this area C, and I would work where the sump where I've got the deeper side here. Here it goes, breaks out to 80, I think that says 83 feet here. So I got a lot of deep water here. So based with that deep water there, I would work out this area here. So now I've got another area identified to fish. So let's just keep on looking down, see what else we have over here. Um, why, 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 just a little further down here. Uh, we, got, we still have a lot of deep water here. Look, we got 90 foot water here. We got good deep water here. Oh, look at this over here. I've got a uh, deep 27 foot hump over here with a little finger coming off the side. Deep finger over here. And I've got a 20 foot hump over here. I like the good depths on here, and it's looks like it's connected to some shallower stuff here. This area here looks really good. I would definitely uh, uh, say I've got a good structure situation over here. So I'm going to go back to my snipping tool. Click on that. I'm going to highlight all of this over, over here. And I'm going to highlight the areas that I want to count. I love this 27-foot hump here. This finger coming off here. This is something I definitely want to hit. Um, this really is a steep trap over here. I don't really see anything here. As I'm fishing this, I'm going to be coming over, making passes, and coming across this. If I see anything out here, I'll fish it. But, you know, I'll be checking out the, these humps over here, too. Yeah, so this is another area that I would save and fish. So boy, you know, we got a lot of structure in this area I'm fishing. I, I think I picked a really good spot of the lake that has a lot of good structure over here to fish. So that's, like I say, in a second here, I'm gonna show you how I got all these maps saved over here already. All right, so let's keep on looking down over here. I don't. I zoomed out a little bit over here. I've got a uh, deeper hump over here. It crowns at around 15, 14 feet. You know, a little finger coming off the side here. It looks like it may drop around 20, 21, 22 feet over here. Um, you can see this thing over here. Uh, this is called a community edit on avionics where you see a little fish symbol here. That means someone went in avionics and they marked the a spot here if you click on it. Let's see if I can click on it here for you. Nope, it's not coming up. There we go. It just says uh, Soldier Point. I don't know. Someone must have uh, went on here and uh, called Soldier Point for whatever reason, but it was probably a spot where they caught fish. Um, and based on it, I would say, yeah, you got a finger coming off here. I'm sure they uh, there are fish there. So I would... Do a, a screenshot of this, save this. I would highlight this area over here, and that's another area for us to check out. But uh, boy, we've got like four, five, six areas all within a couple miles of where we're camping that we're going to be checking out here. So um, it looks great here. Here you got some, here you got a, a really deep pump at 42 feet. I, think that's a little bit too deep I, and it really you know it's a sort of a dead end deep pump I wouldn't really want to check that thing out you got another really deep pump over here 53 feet 
so that goes to 33 feet. Yeah, it's, I might, if I'm not catching fish on these other spots here, and, and there, I find out the weather and water conditions are such where they're really deep, then I probably would check out this up here over here too. But let me just wrap things up here. Like I said, I already have these areas done, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me pull this over here. All right, so I already saved these uh, screenshots into uh, JPEGs. Let me get them from the beginning here. All right, so I did an overall screenshot. I, I went on Photoshop and, and, and actually put fonts, the text in here. So you can see I wrote my camp and I, I've got this printed out. I, I don't I wish I had it here so I could hold it up and show you here. But I've got these saved, printed on color on uh, 17 by 11 sheets. So they're big sheets of paper that I can hold in my hand. I, like I say, I'm old school. I like holding this stuff in my hand. And I've got uh, all the maps here. I've got them identified here as A, B, C, D, E, and F. That's a one, two, three, four, five, six spots to fish, all within a couple of miles, two or three miles of where I'm camping. So that should keep me busy. And I, I, I'm sure out of one, uh, out of these five or six spots that we're going to be catching fish. I'm guessing in most of them. So let's click on what we just saved over here. So I went in here, called the spot A. Let me go back. I put the little A over here. Then I go over to this sheet here. I can see, and I've got it. I, I used the highlighter tool so I can remember. Yep, I want to fish this. I want to check this out. I want to check this out. I want to check this out here too. This uh, hump over here. And then the next spot we identify, we labeled B. A little further down, it looks like I've got a nice deep break line going around this area here. I've got two deeper humps off to the side. I think this is going to be a really good area. I got that to check out. I got area C. I got like a little channel going in here. You know, I might make a pass and check this out over here. I can check out this little deeper finger over here. Check out the side of these humps over here. Um, it looks good. I I like the other spot better, but uh, I got this area D. This looks really good. I've got looks like a deeper break line out here to check deep finger over here check these uh humps over here yeah i've got a deep hump here that crowns at 27 feet with a little finger coming off over here looks really nice i got area e which is basically just this uh one uh hump out here with a deep finger coming off of it and my last one here area f which is this really big deep pump. It crowns off at about 20, 24 feet, 26 feet. Most of it's in 32 feet of water. If, if I've got a really bad weather condition and the fish are really deep, um, then this, this spot here, I think, could be a really good area. And even this adjacent water here, back in here, which I didn't highlight, uh, a lot of stuff here. So that's how I go about it. So I've got this printed out. I'm going to keep it in a boat with me just so I remember, you know, so many times we look at these maps and, and we find so much stuff like fish, but then you don't write it down. You don't take a screenshot. You get out there and then you're like, was this the area that I got all excited about? And, you know, you get on the boat and I, I've got my chart plotter. I is a I think it's a seven inch screen so I'm only looking at this much of the map at a time so that's why I like doing printing this out so I've got a big map here and I can watch it here so or, or see the structures fully like that so so I will do a follow up video when I get back tell you how I did on these structures what kind of success hopefully we had and um, you know I hope you learned something about uh, Navionics here, uh, how important it is to do your homework before. Before I even got a lure in the water, even got even set foot on the lake, I've got about five, six areas where I know where I'm going to spend my time fishing, where I got a good chance to catch a fish. It's so important to do your homework before you get out there. And um, hopefully, the next video here when I get back, I'm going to show you hopefully the really good results we had. In doing this so uh about a few days after i get back i'll uh hope to have the video up for you and join me when part two comes out thanks for watching